Uh, the commissioners meeting Wednesday, January 19th, 2022 is called to order. Uh, the first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport, would you lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, which stand. one nation, one nation under, under God, God, divisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Township Manager, can you call the roll, please? Yes, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Ooh, Here. we're going backwards tonight. All, All right. right. Commissioner um, Arman. Here. Whoa. Commissioner Rappaport. Here. Commissioner Pransky. Here. Commissioner Norris. Here. Commissioner Holland. Commissioner Brockington. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, yeah, Commissioner uh, Holland is actually out ill, and we wish him a speedy recovery. Um, uh, number three, I'm happy to introduce our uh, uh, police chief, John Slavin, who's going to uh, introduce the swearing in of two new Cheltenham Township police officers. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is a great day for the police department. We get to add two fine individuals tonight to swearing in. And I get to show you a three great hires that we just uh, completed the process with. I'm very proud of these guys. They did a great job in distinguishing themselves. Uh, I told them prior to uh, going on live here tonight that their family should be very proud of them. It's a difficult process to get through and they distinguish themselves. And here we are tonight and I'm very happy for that. I'm very grateful for the help of the board and from the manager in, in getting to this point and uh, looking forward to uh, these guys having a great career here with our department. I'd like to start off with Dell, Officer Tindray, Keith Martin. And Judge McHugh, Casey will be uh, Mr. in the other walks. Here's Judge McHugh. Judge, you're muted. Can, we? can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Betty. Very good. I said good evening to everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And good evening. I have Mr. Uh, Officer Gray. Yes, yes. yes. hello. Good evening, Officer Gray. Can you raise your right hand for me? Would you, re would you repeat after me? Place your hand on the Bible, very good. Okay. I, Timothy Gray. I, Timothy Gray. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Home Rule Charter of Cheltenham Township. And the Home Rule Charter of Cheltenham Township. I will uphold, obey, and enforce the law. I would uphold, obey, and enforce the law. Without consideration. Without consideration. To a person's race. To a person's race. Color. Color. Sex. Sex. Religious creed. Religious creed. Sexual orientation. Sexual orientation. Gender identity. Gender identity. Gender expression. Gender expression. Age. Age. National origin. National origin. Ancestry. Ancestry. Handicap. Handicap. Or disability. Or disability. And that I will discharge the duties of police officer. And that I will discharge the duties of police officer. Of the township of Cheltenham. Of the township of Cheltenham. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations, officer. Thank you. I'm virtually shaking their hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sean McGuire. This is Sean McGuire. Good evening, officer. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Would you raise your right hand for me, please? Thank you. Raise your right hand. I, Sean McGuire. I, Sean McGuire. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will support, obey, and defend. I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. 
And the Home Rule Charter of Cheltenham Township. And the Home Rule Charter of Cheltenham Township. I will uphold, obey, and enforce the law. I will uphold, obey, and enforce the law. Without consideration. Without consideration. To a person's race. To a person's race. Color. Color. Sex. Sex. Religious creed. Religious creed. Sexual orientation. Sexual orientation. Gender identity. Gender identity. Gender expression. Gender expression. Age. Age. National origin. National origin. Ancestry. Ancestry. Handicap. Handicap. Disability. Disability. And I will discharge the duties of police officer. I will discharge the duties of police officer. For the township of Cheltenham. For the township of Cheltenham. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations, officer. <laughs> Judge, thank you very much, Judge. I appreciate you doing this for us. We're very happy to have this happen. We're glad you it's for a, your help. Thank you for your help. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And it's good to see you as chief. Thank you. <laughs> I have one more, uh, one more candidate to introduce. Marcus, if you could come on up. Thank, thank you, Judge. As I was telling families, um, I'm very happy with the three individuals that we're, we're bringing here tonight. Uh, we were able to swear two officers in tonight into our ranks. We have a third who's in the police academy. Um, and uh, Marcus will be graduating the police academy in June. Okay. Marcus is a Cheltenham kid. I always generally say he's a Cheltenham kid. He's a Cheltenham High School graduate, very familiar with our community, a product of our community. Um, all of these candidates quickly distinguished themselves from the other candidates in the process. As I self told their families prior to our Zoom tonight that I'm very proud of them. They should be proud of themselves for everything that they've done to get them this far. So I wanted to introduce Marcus. We'll be doing this again when Marcus graduates uh, from the Academy in June. I look forward to that day. I just wanted to introduce you to, to, to you to the community as well, Marcus, and let, and let the, get everyone get a chance to meet you as well. And we will be doing this again in June. And as I said, I'm very happy and grateful for all the assistance and help we've received in getting us here today. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet you, you Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Okay. I <laughs> it's okay. All right, commissioners, is there any other business that you require my services for? Uh, no. Thank you very much, Judge Casey. You're very welcome. Please stay safe and healthy, everybody. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Your Honor. Thank you. And to our police to our police chief and to our police, uh, uh, the entire police department. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing it with us tonight. Uh, we look forward to the opportunity uh, in person to be able to congratulate uh, the two officers who were sworn in, as well as the uh, new recruit who we expect to be sworn in this summer. Uh, so uh, we appreciate the work that the entire department does. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, uh, that brings us to number five. Uh, just before number five, I'm going to interject just a, uh, a quick uh, personal congratulations or congratulations um, from the commissioners who were not elected. I'm congratulating our newly elected, our re-elected commissioners, uh, Commissioner Holland, Commissioner Rappaport, and Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Um, so congratulations from, from me, from your fellow commissioners, yes. as well as from the township staff. Uh, also congratulations to uh, Mark Lieberson, our finance officer who was elected. Um, and one more congratulations and thank you to our township manager who at uh, uh, a recent meeting, his uh, contract was renewed for a two year period. So we appreciate the work you do and thank you. Uh, number five, <clears throat> approval of the Board of Commissioners regular meeting minutes dated December 15th, 2021, and the reorganization meeting minutes dated January 3rd, 2022. Um, can I have a motion to approve those? So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, I'm going to do number six and seven together so that we can move the meeting along. 
um, acceptance of the executive summary financial report of the manager secretary for the month of December and acceptance of the accounts paid report for the month of December, 2021. Uh, unless there are any questions, I'll move for their acceptance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, six and seven. Up to number eight. Uh, there are several expenditures, uh, which for any of the public who's listening, uh, these were discussed at earlier meetings. Um, that's not to say if there are any questions, we will certainly take questions or comments, but these items have been uh, thoroughly discussed and reviewed at previous meetings and are now up for our formal approval. Uh, Mr. So, President, I see, I see a finger or a pen floating there in front of Anne. Oh, yes, Commissioner Rappaport, <laughs> question, comment. Um, yeah, on uh, item F number two, uh, and indeed, we did discuss this at length. My understanding is that the um, contract um, with Mascaro ends in April. Um, yes. So I, it says annual recycling fees, and I, I had a question why why it would say annual there. Uh, Chris, would you like to comment on that? why it says annual it's going to be an ongoing for seven years not uh, not with well, mascara no so yeah the new contract would be with, so just i guess to clean it up mascara is currently who we're with now that's just a um blanket purchase order for seventy thousand dollars which i believe will cover the cost uh between now and the end of the contract which would be april 21st right. i believe right. yes Okay, so it, it, it's fine with me if we get rid of annual, right? It's going to be cleaned up to say mascara in the amount of 70000 or a, a uh, blanket through, purse. Through order April. Of, yeah, through the ex, expiration of the existing contract, which right. is April 21st. Right, because I think it was a six-month extension. Correct. Okay, I'm done. I okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start off with 8A, approval of all expenditures oh. recommended for approval at the January Public Safety Committee and Public Affairs Committee meetings. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 8B, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Ford Chrysler um, in the amount of $3,412 for the rebuild of a transmission in a police car. All those in favor say aye. 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 8C, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve an emergency purchase order for Foley Inc. in the amount of 11626 to break down and replace the turbo and all associated parts on the Public Works large loader. All those in favor say aye. 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 8D, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Gauls in the amount of 16,937 for the purchase of 17 ballistic vests. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 I'm going to interject here before I continue. Um, let's see, is our police, is John? Is John still there? Good. Um, I, uh, John, I have a, uh, a request. Um, uh, not necessarily for this meeting, but if you can provide uh, these couple of purchase orders by the police uh, remind me that I'd like to see a summary of the police forfeiture money. Um, specifically, I'm asking that you prepare a summary that shows the beginning of 2021, what the balance was a year ago, what, it, what it, the balance is at the end of 2021, and obviously any transactions that occurred during 2021. In addition, if you could also uh, add on to that report, any plans that you have for the forfeiture funds for 2022? Yes, sir. Okay, so rather than putting you on the spot now, these, these couple of items uh, remind me that um, I think um, uh, one thing I'm interested in doing is using that for those forfeiture funds whenever we have the opportunity to, and therefore, 
uh, save on our operating uh, budget. So that's the reason for the question. I understand, sir. Okay. Uh, number 8E, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for Whitmer Public Safety Group in the amount of $9,826 for the purchase of a nine millimeter um, a gun. Oh, ammo. Ammo. Oh, it's ammo. It says ammo. I thought on the attachment it looked like a gun. Maybe it said for the gun. This is just for ammo? Yes. Oh, okay. That answers one of them. Hopefully you'll have most of that left over for next year. This is nine millimeter that we transitioned to. That's why it's, it's, it's large. We, don't have, we went from 40 to nine. Oh, gotcha. okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, 8F, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the following blanket purchase orders for 2022. Uh, the first one is Covanta Energy in the amount of 582,000. This is for the annual trash disposal fees, uh, which we discussed at uh, quite uh, a lengthy discussion at our last meeting. Any questions or comments at this time? All those in favor say aye. 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 And 8F2, the JP Mascaro, uh, this is for the annual recycling processing fees, which as we just discussed, Mascaro will be starting the year uh, and then it will be uh, a transfer, but the, the dollars are an estimate for the year. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, we're up to number nine. Uh, so I'm going to call upon Commissioner Ziegmanfeld for the public chair of the Public Works Committee, which met on January 5th to discuss that meeting. You're, you're muted, Mitch. Mitch. Rarely is the case. Mitch, we can't Mitch hear you, you're Mitch. muted. We can't hear you. You're muted. Mitch, your microphone is muted. I'm talking louder like he's going to hear me with his microphone <laughs> muted. You can't hear I believe, yeah, I believe it was Allison's initiative that muted me, so I won't say more than that. As many of you know, typically you, public works has many agenda items, but in, in lieu of Commissioner Zygmuntfeld not being available, Commissioner Armin, the, the, uh, the vice chair of the, the committee, was very efficient, and as such, there are no follow-up agenda items. So all we're gonna do is consider approval of the recommendation of the Public Works Committee and acceptance of the regular minutes uh, from the meeting dated January 5th. Here, here, Commissioner Armin. Uh, you're welcome <laughs> and I so move. <laughs> Thank you. All, all those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. reluctantly. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, before I go on to number 10, uh, so that I don't forget, I'm going to uh, introduce or ask our solicitor, Ed Diazio, to make a uh, executive session announcement. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, the Sunshine Act announcement for this evening uh, is that the board met in executive session um, last Wednesday, January 22nd, 2022, to discuss a number of matters of personnel and uh, litigation involving the township. So thank you for not forgetting to uh, make space for, for that announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number 10, the uh, Building and Zoning Committee met on January 5th and Commissioner Pransky is going to discuss that meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, we did meet on January 5th and this will make Mitch very happy. My report's gonna take a little longer than his. Uh, item 10A, is approval of a proposed pilot agreement between Cheltenham Township and Sunrise Community of Pennsylvania for the property located at 2 Edgemore Road in Cheltenham, uh, 19027. It is attached. And if anybody in the audience does not know, a pilot is a payment in lieu of taxes. This is a nonprofit organization. And Mr. Diazio, I will give you the microphone and you can explain the intricacies of this pilot. Sure, thank you. So um, as Commissioner Pransky indicated, there's a pilot agreement. Um, under the pilot agreement, the property owner uh, will be paying uh, the entire share of the real estate taxes on this uh, property. Um, 
they won't be real estate taxes. It's it's a payment uh, to the taxing entities in lieu of uh, real estate taxes, but obviously the financial impact is the same. And um, it covers both the school district real estate taxes and the township uh, real estate taxes. So uh, we were very happy to uh, be able to negotiate those terms um, you know, with the, with the property owner. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them, but that's the, um, that's the summary. Is there anything else in the pilot that we should know about other than the, uh, that payment issue? Is there anything else negotiated that we should be aware of? There will, there will be on, there have been ongoing discussions with the um, property owner uh, regarding um, some additional uh, conditions that the commissioners discussed at that meeting and following the board's uh, anticipated approval of the pilot agreement this evening, uh, we'll be working to finalize um, a, a contract with uh, with Sunrise to, wow. to formally memorialize those, those provisions. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Let me see, uh, finger, 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 finger. Oh, wait, <laughs> Anne. <laughs> Yeah, just, a, I'm sorry, a question on number 23, um, it, which says uh, this agreement shall be binding uh, basically on, on the parties. And then it says this agreement is not transferable or assignable by Sunrise should it sell any or all of its properties. So I guess my question is, um, we have to get a new pilot with if they decide to turn around and sell to uh, another nonprofit. Uh, yeah, or, to another yeah. Nonprofit. Right, and is that uh, is that really uh, a required provision there? If if there was a new entity, in order to have a legally binding contract with that new entity, you'd have to enter into a contract. Um, you know, with, with that new entity. The pilot doesn't attach to the land, unfortunately. Correct. Right. Mr. Brocken, okay. can I see a finger also? Uh, yeah, I, I have two things. One, um, we need to correct the zip code. It's, not, it's 19012 and not that's 19027. That's what, I saw. that's what I grew up in that neighborhood. It was 012. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and the second thing, I actually wanted to sort of bring our, our fire marshal um, to lynch into this. I wanted to know, were you able to do an inspection to determine I think at one time you said they may need to put in a um, sprinkler system into that property because there was some change of requirements. And I was wondering, was that done or do they, do they need to do that? No, that still needs to happen, Commissioner. Um, speaking with Henry, we decided uh, the, the two properties that we have spoken of uh, with this situation, once it went through all the uh, process, you know. Um, then you guys will uh, do that then, okay. Yep, then we would do it then. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Any any further questions from the commissioners? Any commissioners from that huge audience watching? Okay. Then, uh, uh, Mr. Brocking, since it's in your ward, I'll let you make a motion. I'll make approve. a motion to approve item 10A from the building and zoning. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. And item 10B. Authorize advertisement of a public hearing on March 6, 2022, to consider public comment on an ordinance amending Chapter 295, Section 295 1804, which we all know and love, entitled Board of Historical Architectural Review, the Bihar, and Section 295 1805, entitled Public Works Committee of the Board of Commissioners. Basically, this is some housekeeping. We're moving a committee report from one meeting to another meeting. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Is Commissioner Zygmunt felt happy that this is no longer on his agenda? It shortens public works. I'm deeply disturbed. <laughs> Immeasurably, yes. All right, uh, then I will move to authorize that public hearing uh, and ask all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, considering that, I will then ask for approval of the regular meeting minutes dated January 5th, 2022, except for Anne's question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was remiss. I was asked, I think, to send in um, the comments, the questions that I had raised uh, 
during the meeting on that at one application. And for the purposes of making sure that, um, the doc that, that the minutes are accurate, especially on something that um, is so uh, controversial as uh, to have sent our attorney to the um, zoning hearing board, I'd like to submit that instead of the um, summary. So I apologize to staff uh, for not getting that to you, but I'd like to uh, insert, which I can do, you know, so I would, I would recommend that we say pending, uh, you know, the substitution of the actual questions for the- Got it. Uh, and I, I will make a motion to accept the minutes with the pending modifications from Commissioner Rip. And I do, I do apologize for that, not sending it. Uh, if everyone is agreeable to that, uh, then I'll say to, again, all those in favor of accepting the minutes with those pending amendments, say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Any aye. opposed? Any confused? Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. President, uh, that concludes the business of the Building and Zoning Committee. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, number eight on the agenda is the Public Safety Committee, which met on January 12th. Commissioner Brockington is going to discuss that meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, we have three items up for approval tonight. And we'll go with item 11A, which is approval of a purchase order for the purchase and replacement of five Ford Interceptor Utility Police Vehicles through CoStar in the amount of $177,750. Are there any questions from commissioners about that? Hearing none, I call for the approval. All those President? in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Item 11B, approval of a purchase order for Cody Systems in the amount of $17,570.52 for the annual support from January 1, 2022 to December 31st, 2022. I call for the approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the last item tonight is the approval of a purchase order to New Holland Auto Group in the amount of $34,660 for the purchase of a 2022 Dodge Ram 1500 for the new a AMA vehicle. I call for the approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those are the every three things that were up for vote approval tonight. Um, I do um, call for the approval of the public safety minutes for our meeting, which was held on January 12th, 2022. All those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Mr. President, that's all for public safety. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Brockington. Uh, public Affairs Committee met on January 12th. Commissioner Rappaport, you have several items to discuss there. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so the first is um, the committee uh, wants to approve a change order in the amount of $4,375 to H&K Group for the emergency stream bank stabilization and sediment relocation work on Tucane Creek Parkway near Melrose Country Club for a total expenditure of $81,384. And on behalf of the committee, I so move. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, item B. Approval of the recommendation from MSW Consultants to enter into an agreement with Republic Services for seven years at $105 a ton with 100% revenue sharing for processing, transfer station operation, and transportation of recyclable materials. And I so move. Uh, and just before we vote on that, I want to thank Chris Kluhl for all his work on that. And for any residents who are listening, um, we continue to urge everyone to do their uh, recycling and utilize the recycling bin and be careful not to put in materials that don't belong in it. We are going to continue our ongoing effort uh, via our website or via other materials uh, to explain what materials should be recycled and what shouldn't be. It's, it's an important ongoing effort that the Cheltenham Township with our sustainability efforts, we are strongly in favor of. So thank you. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 
uh, item C, uh, we discussed uh, the uh, proposed elimination of Magisterial District 38102, which was uh, the district where uh, Judge McHugh Casey, uh, uh, who is just with us, uh, 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 presides currently. Uh, so on her retirement, that is uh, proposed to close. Um, we at uh, last week's meeting, we discussed um, authorizing uh, a draft to send. That draft was made. It was circulated to, frankly, the judges, to um, our um, uh, police, and uh, uh, to uh, the board uh, earlier. And um, so um, uh, with those professional eyes on it and uh, and supporting it, uh, I so move. This right. is the authorization to draft, not to send right. the letter as it stands right now. Right, right, right. right. And it, it was drafted and you all have a copy of what was seen uh, essentially by uh, the judges. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mitch. Just before we, we get, to, huh? I, I want to we, we I want to restate Brad's question. And can you make it clear? Are we I understand we drafted a letter. So is this to continue drafting it or to send it? Well, yeah. I, I last week it was authorized to draft it. Draft it to draft it. So uh, the draft has been drafted. And right. uh, I think it is. We have not. We have not yet approved a draft. That's correct. It has not been approved. Right. So this so. is just to draft, not to draft and send. We should the word and send should be removed. Right. Well, well, let, let, let me uh, uh, make a comment, if I may. So th there's a draft that's that's been circulated. I don't know that it's been approved by everyone. I think we should make sure that everyone on the board is comfortable with it because it is being sent uh, on behalf of the board. However, we should, we, in my view, we should vote tonight to complete the drafting and send it because okay. it okay. needs to go out before the end of the month. Right. Okay. The time okay. Time. okay. So the motion then would be to uh, authorize the completion of the draft and send the letter. Anne, that's is that your motion? Uh, well, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there I mean, it, it clearly, you know, if people are not unanimous, uh, you know, it only takes four four people to authorize the sending of it. But sure, uh, however, the the board wants to proceed. I, I think there are Zickman five. Fingers. I think there are I, five fingers raised by by Mitch. Commissioner Zickmanfeld. Yes, <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, person. I just think you know there needs to be some additional amateur eyes onto this letter. I heard you th that they're professionalized. So I'll add that there should be some amateur eyes on it. I think there's a, uh, there's a need to be um, a little more assertive and a little more uh, reflect reflective of opposition rather than um, I think what I view is as language that's uh, a little bit defensive and not quite as proactive as I think we need to be to make it clear that uh, I'm call the, the board of commissioners, our, the, the township staff, including our public safety staff. Um, and I, I'd say we have feedback from uh, the two municipal judges. I'd like it to be more clear about just how disturbed and how opposed we are to that, uh, to, to that proposal. And I don't think the language in the letter carries that uh, tone to the degree that I think it needs to. So that's why I'm proposing that we have take a little more time. But yes, agree that we need to release it before the end of January. But I, I do believe the tone needs to be uh, slightly more assertive and and um, more rec recognizing the risk and uh, public safety challenges that a, an action like that by outsiders puts the township in. Um, you know, we, we can discuss this uh, at length in detail. I think one of the reasons that it has to be, um, well, first of all, I think if anything, it's probably stronger than, um, I, I think it's about as strong as it gets. And 
one doesn't want to make assertions, especially when you're talking about projections and you're talking about discrimination, uh, which are two of the themes um, where there, you don't want to be in a position of accusing, uh, especially when you're trying to win the support of a county uh, or a, of a Commonwealth court. Um, you know, so you don't want to be accusatory. You need to be very careful how you phrase what you're saying. And uh, when it comes to numbers, um, these are projections and we want to make sure that we are stating what we know to be true, not what they are just simply projecting inaccurately. So okay. I, think, I think diplomacy goes a long way. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think the tone is exactly where it needs to be. But, I, you know, I, I think because it's been through a lot of eyes and you guys have all seen it, um, you know, I, I didn't get any other feedback about uh, the language not being strong enough. Uh, you guys can do what you want. I think we should vote. I think if we give ourselves, if there's questions, if we give ourselves, you know, to a specific date, even if it was a week from today, to get any specific uh, other changes or comments into the township manager or into the president, um, any of those that are significant reviewed, or at least sent to all of us, and if they don't receive, if we don't receive comment back on them within 24 or 48 hours, send as is, yeah. so it has a path forward. Yeah, keep, keep in mind, yeah, as long as staff, and, and we know we're down a little bit on staff, uh, it still needs to be sent on letterhead. Uh, I think decisions still need to be made by uh, the police department to whether they are going to send a separate letter. Um, and uh, so those things do need time for turnaround. So um, I, I think the window needs to be fairly short. That would be uh, what I would suggest. Yeah, I, I agree. I think a short window is, is a good idea, but Commissioner Pransky's thought about giving a little more time for, for comment, I also okay. agree with. All right, so um, Mr. President, I'll let you uh, frame it however you think uh, um, okay. needs to, so, to go forward. Um, so, uh, Anne, I'm, I'm going to right now leave it in your hands, but I'm going to <laughs> Uh, make the motion. <laughs> well, I say leave it in your hands. We're, I'm going to suggest that we um, do just what Commissioner Pransky said and Commissioner Armin. Um, today is the uh, 19th. Yeah. Um, if we give it till we, we want a, a deadline and we uh, by Monday, the 24th, uh, because then it does, it does, we want to give uh, at least a few hours or something for the staff to put it on letterhead. Um, uh, and frankly, it's not something that should uh, go to the last minute. There's no need for it. Um, I think it's, I think the letter's mostly there. And if it needs a, a little tweaking or changing, um, that's fine too. Mr. President? Yes. Quick, quick question. Uh, so comments are in by the 24th. How do we handle those comments? I think there needs to be at least a day or something to make sure that everybody knows what they are and if they agree or disagree. Because otherwise, we send a comment in and, you know, I'm being facetious, but somebody says, I like this comment, I don't like that comment, this is in the letter that's not, how is that decision made? All right, then I'm going to change that. Uh, comments in by the Friday, the 21st. Well, the, the letter's been circulating for... A right, day. it's been circulating for right, exactly. that much time. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. right, that's fine. Uh, yeah. And, and then for it to be... Uh, um, adjusted, uh, adjusted as necessary and sent out to us by the 24th for our approval. How's that? Everybody okay with that? Um, and, and frankly, uh, uh, Commissioner Armin, you, you may disagree with me here, but it is the type of letter that uh, hopefully all seven commissioners so, should sign on and agree to it. But frankly, if for some reason someone takes exception to it, we can still mail it out from the Board of Commissioners. 
I, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Okay. And, and I'm confident that we'll have a... And, and I'm hopeful we will. I, I just, it, it's just the type of thing, we definitely want this letter to go out. And I, I don't want, um, frankly, I don't want any dispute or uh, issue uh, where uh, one commissioner takes an exception to it and we, we frankly, we run out of time or, uh, right. It's more important. Agreed. This, uh, it's something where, what's the expression? We don't want to let uh, perfect uh, um, prevent us from uh, making progress here. Not quite the expression. But. It's close enough. <laughs> um, okay. We can have it so, amended by Monday. So we're going to authorize that, uh, we're going to vote now, though, to authorize the draft and sending of this letter opposing the elimination of magis magisterial district number 38-1-02. Um, and so that's what we're voting on to, to do that. All, these, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. And back to you. Thank you. Uh, I'll move the uh, acceptance of our minutes for uh, public affairs of January 12th. Okay. Uh, we had trouble hearing you a little bit, but all those in favor accepting the meeting minutes from public affairs say aye. 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 Uh, and Thank you. Oh, okay. Sorry, Ed, I was reading your message. So, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, back to the commissioner's meeting, number 13, old business. Commission, yes, old business, Commissioner Armand. Mr. President, thank you. Um, old business, uh, Lime Kiln Pike. Uh, the, that is old. It is old. The, the bridge <laughs> um, is going to be closed on, uh, not this weekend, next weekend, from 3 p.m. on Saturday, the 20. Uh, uh, January 29th until 8 a.m. on uh, Sunday the 30th. So um, please uh, plan accordingly and uh, Manager Zienkowski, if we can make sure that we get that out on the alerts to, to folks um, for next, not this weekend, next weekend, uh, I would appreciate that. And, and, uh, and Chief Slavin as well, um, I'm sure you're aware. Thank Is you, Mr. Cool? President. Welcome. Is this the last closing? Is the bridge? Will this finish it up? Um, <laughs> well, go ahead. One would go ahead, hope. I, I want to I want to end it here. Co let's commit to that, Matt. Well, <laughs> one, one would hope. If it were up to me, uh, there'd be a different story. But um, and, any other head. old business for the commissioners' meeting? No old business. Any new business for the commissioners' meeting? Uh, commissioners, I have something that's new. If you have a minute, yes. Um, Chief I just wanted to let you know I, I had conversations with the manager earlier this week about a, a pretrial service uh, program that the county is rolling out. It's a new system um, that the president judge uh, and uh, Montgomery County Courts are are, are going to be changing our arrangement system. Uh, defendants now will be uh, required to meet with uh, pretrial services, probation, uh, you know, alcohol services, that type of thing. Uh, prior to their arraignments. Um, and they'll also be given the opportunity to meet with counsel prior to being arraigned. Um, this is still in the works. It's not finalized yet. Uh, my concern is the impact this is going to have on our department, our police services we provide, and some costs that might be involved in me making alterations to the building. Uh, there's a couple different plans. We could stay remote and do it here uh, via Zoom, but we still have to have these uh, facilities available to the defendants to have uh, the pre-trial service meetings and then meeting with their counsel as well. So I'm working on that. I've been spending the last few days trying to work this out. Montgomery County Chiefs of Police is involved in this process with the chief, uh, the president judge of the county. I just want to let you know they have a meeting pl plan for this Tuesday. I should have some more information there. Um, we'll have a plan in place. It goes into effect February 14th, 2022. Uh, all arraignments will be handled like this uh, moving forward. So, um, Either way, I'm going to come up with a plan. I'll, I'll speak to the manager about uh, where I where I see this going with it, and we'll try to keep you informed about what, how this will impact us as well. Thank you, Chief. I have a question. Just um, can you tell us are other uh, townships or municipalities having similar concerns or expressing similar reservations? 
Yes, uh, yes, sir, they are. Um, our, our, our concerns were presented to the board. Uh, we have a representative from Montgomery County Chiefs on that panel. Um, there's a new president judge now as well. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to impact where this goes, if they're going to try to revamp it again. The new judge may have uh, her, their spin on how she wants to do things. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to play out. I'll know more Tuesday for sure. Okay. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld, you had yeah, a question? Um, Chief, is this coming from the new president judge of uh, the Court of Common Pleas? It was actually prior to her, sir. It was the previous uh, judge, okay. though. Richie, Richie was the was the was the one who uh, who got this program off the ground. This is an unfunded mandate that was given to us, and here we are to, to try to make it work. And uh, we will make it work. I just want to let you know I have some concerns about what this how this may impact us. Does does it, something like this also go through the district magistrates, or this only goes through the county? The district magic, it's, it's changing the system where we do it. Right now, we pick the phone up and say, Judge, we have somebody to be arranged. We have a little bit more leeway. We're not going to have a lot of the leeway we had. Either we're going to, we're going to, you know, do it remotely here or take them up to the prison, one or the other. My concern about traveling back and forth there is the two hour time limit's going to take all told to and from and any other interactions there. That's, that's being swift. So I lose two officers for that period of time which brings me to talking to you tonight. That's what my concern is. So, so we just spent 20 minutes talking about a concerns that we had on the elimination of a district magistrate position. Yes, and here you have an imposition of an obligation mm -hmm. that will take on responsibility without funding, without clear support and without a, a, a clear pathway. It seems to me that there's a little bit of an orchestration here. So in fact, it reinforces some of the things that we should be considering because it's not efficient and it's certainly imposing a burden on both our police force as well as on quote unquote, if we're down by one district magistrate, it right. will increase the workload. So, so look at this as well as the proposal and realize that there's something going on that we have an issue with that we need to be a little more attentive to. Thank you. That's why I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention again. Things may change on Tuesday. And I certainly will keep everyone informed if there are any changes to this. Um, I just want to let you know that's where we stand today. So, Matt, hold on just one second. I, I want to clarify. Is, is this, am I correct, this is coming from the county, though? Yes. But isn't the uh, other district justice issue, isn't that coming from Harrisburg? The state, ultimately, yes. But it is also coming from the county. The county, too. going to go to the county level first then most likely to the state level for final final approval. So I guess it's not going to be the final approval on that. I would I would not I would venture a guess that they would not be. I would say the state would be the final approval on that. But but am I am I I guess my question is as far as going back to the previous issue, eliminating the district justice position. Mm -hmm. Was that initiated on the county level or did that um, the county just got involved and was directed to do it by Harrisburg? I don't have that. I wouldn't know that for sure. So I don't want to speculate. Matt, do you know that? My understanding is that it's a, a state initiative. That's, that's what I thought. So Mitch, that, that's why I'm sort of separating them a, a little bit. Um, in one, one seems to be initiated from Harrisburg, whereas this is uh, being controlled by the county. Yes. It seems, to me, it seems to me that you have, you know, an imposition on the township on our police force, et cetera. And one hand does not know what the other hand is doing or proposing. Yeah, that, yeah. Be, yeah. yeah, that, I, that I agree with. Hey, ahead, hey Chief, Chief you, mentioned, you mentioned it was not, not funded. Do you have any idea what type of, what dollar amount you're looking at? At this point, it depends on estimate? which way we go. Minor alter, alterations to our building. I, I have a couple of things I could possibly do. I'm not sure without getting numbers for you where that would cost you know, okay. we, have, we have some areas we can maybe uh, tinker with to make it. It has to be private. Uh, these are confidential conversations that are between the attorney and, and their client. So I have to ensure that these, you know, everybody can't walk by and hear what's being said. So I have to take certain measures to make sure that that's, that's being uh, recognized. So I guess that's a cost factor as well. The other cost factor would be taking, taking our guys up there for two hours. Right. You know, losing police officers. And if something happens, they're going to have to bring somebody in. I just see that's it as right. potential to be something to be, you know, I have to, we're going to have to monitor very closely. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Matt. Go ahead. It's okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Chief, ju just one clarifying question. You said that um, under the new uh, PTI program that um, individuals who are about to be arraigned would ha have 
the ability to meet with, did you say their counsel or a yes. counselor? A counselor. A counsel, both. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet with pretrial services, which is a count, you know, right. see what other services we can provide them, social services they can provide them. Then they're, they're also given the opportunity to confer with their private attorney or their attorney, I should say. Is, is there not a mechanism currently where mm -hmm. um, someone who's about to be arraigned can meet with their attorney prior yeah. to? That's a mandate from the court. That's the mandate from the president judge that they wanted that to take place. But I'm saying that does not exist currently. So if, if oh. I'm about to get arraigned, I can't ask for, no, for my No, no, uh, not as it sits right now. No, sir. Okay. Um, and and uh, so would you be, because um, this is the first I'm hearing of it, and, and, and frankly, look, um, full disclosure, I I think there's value to pretrial intervention. Um Obviously, I don't want to have to redo the police administration building and, and spend a million dollars to, to implement it. But, but, but I think there's value in pretrial intervention and making sure that people are getting services that may um, put them on a different path. Uh, and, uh, you know, even sometimes talk to lawyers before that, um, uh, you know, speaking as a lawyer. But, but, um, uh, I'd be, this is the first I'm hearing of, so I'd be interested in seeing what the proposals are. And if you say they may change on Tuesday, you don't have to send it to us immediately. You may want to wait till Tuesday to see if there are any changes, but, but I think circulating that to, uh, to the board might be helpful in advance. I can do that. No problem. Thank you, chief. Is Tuesday would be okay. Then once I hear back. From yeah. Tuesday I mean, I, I don't want, it doesn't make sense to send it to us if it's going to, if it's going to change, but um, so yeah, when, when you have some more finality, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah. And one of the things that um, I was under the impression that currently our current uh, magisterial uh, courts do engage in a degree of that um, pretrial effort. And in fact, that's one of the things that is so time consuming uh, in their courts and um, keeps them very busy, uh, that those services are actually already being provided. And that is one of the things that would be sacrificed if the court, if the one court is closed and they're uh, consolidated. So um, it also, depending on what we hear Tuesday, it also would be useful to talk again with our judges to find out uh, to what extent they feel it's duplicative of what they're already doing, um, or if they actually prefer that system. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. That, that actually following up on Commissioner Zygmuntfeld's comment is further indication that one hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing, and, and they're, they're complicating each one, one issue is complicating the other or overlapping the other. So. It's more like one hand doesn't even know the other hand exists. <sighs> well, it's also, it's also a, an issue of the diversity of the caseload and the different situations in the different magisterial districts. Uh, so yes, so it further endorses our efforts to uh, thank, thank you, Chief. And um, uh, anything, um, is there anything that we can or should be doing to, uh, to, either, to either help you or help push back on this? So that, uh, uh, again, following up on Commissioner Armin, it's, uh, their intent might, might be uh, admirable, mm -hmm. but for them to do it without properly funding it, or without properly considering uh, the structure input. of various departments. <laughs> or or input. input. Yeah, yeah, that would be important. Yeah. <laughs> you know, input would have been helpful. Uh, but uh, I certainly hope, as soon as I get more on this, I'll share what I know with you. I'll, I'll come up with a plan. I will have a plan in place for this when this hits on the 14th. You know, and, and we'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Um, but but let us know if the, if uh, we should be contacting people at the county or pushing them back for doing something. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Any other new business? Nope, oh, I don't see any new business. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for a citizens forum. We have to have a couple of citizens to have citizens forum, and we do have a few citizens. 
as well as staff are citizens and commissioners are, could be citizens too. And <laughs> they have to be citizens. Yeah, citizens forum. <laughs> are you particularly um, enamored of this meeting, uh, President <laughs> Norris, that you don't want to adjourn it? <laughs> All right. I, I, I stole to Lauren. Uh, Teresa <laughs> raised her hand. Uh, Teresa, go ahead. Unmute yourself and let us yeah. know what's in your mind. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, um, good evening Teresa. I have a question about the um, contract that's being renewed with Ms. Garrow. Uh, I just noticed it on the agenda. I've been kind of um, busy with other projects. So I don't know, miss this at one of the uh, public works meetings. But um, has that been approved yet? Yeah, it's, just, uh, it's just uh, pretty I'll standard. Let, I'll, I'll let Chris correct me if I'm wrong, but to okay. recent, just to clarify it, um, we're actually moving from Mascaro. So okay. the, the con it's, uh, it's, uh, we need Mascaro for, I think, another four months until uh, Republic will take over that, that work. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, because um, recently we had a neighbor's meeting and Chris was invited to come to speak. It didn't work out. Everyone was kind of looking forward to what the update on the uh, recycle programs are. And um, the concerns were th the feedback that I got today when I noticed that this was coming up. Uh, it, it was that there's a, they're tied up in a lot of litigation with different municipalities. Yes. And that's concern. And then right. it was also a concern that was brought up a number of years ago when we used to meet at um, Curtis Hall. Uh, about their, um, you know, their processing standards and environmental violations. So I'm glad to hear that it's going to move over to this other facility. And um, I'll report back to the neighbors and let them know that. So where is the Republic? Republica, is that how you say it? Republic Re Services. Oh, Republic mm -hmm. Services. And where are they located? Go ahead, Chris. Hi, Teresa. Hi, so, Chris. Uh, it's, so, Teresa, just to back up, at the last week's public affairs meeting, I had a lengthy yeah. discussion with the commissioners. And uh, again, I'm sorry for not attending that meeting. It was due to COVID-related issues. Yeah, so sorry to hear you weren't well. Yeah. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. I just want to make sure everybody knew. It wasn't I uh, disregarded. It was just that I couldn't make it. But at the time, so anyway, the last uh, week's public affairs meeting, uh, when those minutes come out in the video, I would okay. recommend, and we're going to post it as well, to link that to your groups and a lot of the other groups that had questions. Great. I think that would be very informative. But to answer your question, JP Mascaro is the current provider that expires um, April 21st, I believe, at midnight. And then okay. April 22nd, we will be going to Republic Services, which is in King of Prussia on Route 202, right in Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. like, right, like right on the outside skirts of Bridgeport and King of Prussia there, right off of 202. We used to go there years ago, and uh, it's a pretty well-run facility. Oh, great. So, so Teresa, be... there, there is a, a very informative uh, discussion that took place at the last meeting. So if you take a look at those minutes or the video, I think. OK, I'll, I'll refer the neighbors to that. So uh, it sounds like we're going to get an upgrade, and maybe it'll be a, a smoother system. We, we are. Yes, and Teresa, real, and real, uh, real quick, not to keep everybody going, Teresa, as I promised, uh, once everything's set, we know uh, what's going on. We have the contract in hand. There's some conversations I still need to have with Republic. I will revisit another meeting with your organization as promised. All right. Terrific. Okay. I'll let them know, Chris. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. Any other citizens forum? Um, I will take a motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.